welcome to this video HTML canvas intro and this is the intro for a certain series in which I'm going to show you all kinds of animations that we can build with this canvas so what is a canvas well canvas is an HTML element that we can use to draw in a web browser and you can create all kinds of cool stuff with it like this is a fairly simple option a timer which always shows you the right time so it is at the moment 714, which also translates to 27. Uh, you can create this animation, which is also kind of simple, but this also goes a lot of calculations into it. And uh, what we also can do is create this Discord animation. And as you can see here, we have some kind of black hole, which looks pretty cool to me. And it's also created in Canvas. And this is also what got me a little inspired to look into it. And I thought it was fun to show what I've learned and to make it a little bit more comprehensible what you can do with Canvas. So, so that's what the series is about. So what do we need to get going with Canvas? Well, it's kind of handy if you have some HTML, a little bit of CSS and some JavaScript experience. It's not really necessary, but I would recommend it. Also, you need an editor, and I've got Visual Studio Code myself. If you already have another editor, you can use that as well. Otherwise, I would recommend going to your Google and fill in Visual Studio Code. And go to the code.visualstudio.com and download Visual Studio Code. This is also an editor which you can use on Mac, so that's very nice. It's really good in my opinion, of course. So when you've done that, we can open up an editor. So Visual Studio Code in my case. And the first thing that we're going to do is create a new folder. So I'm going to open up a folder and I'm just going to create a new one. It's going to say canvas, enter, enter. And then I select the directory. And then we open up an empty directory and what we're going to add to this directory, which we can do in Visual Studio Code by clicking on this new file and create an index.html. So if you are known with HTML, then you would know that there are certain elements that are mandatory in HTML. So the first one, and also the most important one, is the HTML tag itself. HTML is an XML markup language in which we can create elements that we can show on the web browser. I will show you in a moment. The other thing is the head. And on the same level as the head, we need the body. So in the head, we do the references to the outside. So let's say styling sheets, CSS, styling sheets, JavaScript sheets. And in the body, we actually create the elements that we want to show on our page. So if I now type here something, test and how I can see now what it's going to create is by right clicking here we're going to reveal the Explorer and I'm going to double click on this index HTML so as you can see we have test here and what I typed here was test if I create an element like an header one tag this it's really simple you just have to type h1 so you do have to know the tag that you want to use we set text inside it, we save it, go back to our browser, press F5, and as you can see, it's now a header tag. We can do this with all kinds of different elements, but we came here to play with the canvas. So let's do that. Instead of H1 and this test, I'm going to create a canvas. And what's mandatory when you create a canvas is by giving it a width and a height. So I'm going to give it a width of 400 and also a height of 400. Let's save that, it's F5. And as you can see, we see nothing. And why don't we see anything? That's because the canvas is also white and the background is white. And to show you that, it's a really easy way to check how a site is organized is by right clicking it, click on inspect or inspect here, which is called in Dutch then we can see that we have here a canvas element and as you can see it has some it also has some body to it it is this 
it is this blue line is 400 by 400 and actually what we want is to create a canvas element which is just as big as the screen but because everybody's screen resolution is different we're going to do that by javascript but first let's take a look at how we can manage to see this canvas element what we can do is and if you're really into CSS, you're going to hate me a little for it, is set a styling property. And in the styling property, we can say background color is red. What this is going to do is going to set the background color of our element on which we put this tag, which is the canvas. It's going to turn the background to red. So if we go back now and we have five, we can now actually see our canvas element. Now, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to fix this white border around it because I don't want it. And what is this right border? So if we right click on it and we check out the body, we can see that there are certain margins on it. So what is a margin? A margin is space around the element that you put it on. So we have a body and it pushes everything on the outside eight pixels away. So to fix that, we have to set the margin to zero pixels. And to show you that, we can also type directly in here and we set margin zero pixels. And what we can do now is, as you can see, is that our white border is gone now. So we want that as default. And to do that, we have to go to our Visual Studio code again. And we also could set that on the body with also a style tag, but to actually use CSS properly, I'm going to define in this head a style tag. And we're just going to use CSS. If you want to, you can also create a file, a CSS file and link it inside the head. But, but because there's not much CSS going on in these videos, I'm just going to place it in the head for now. So what we can do now is we can put up a reference and we want to set the body with a different margin. And you can do that in different ways. The way I'm going to do is just using the body tag. And this means that every body tag now gets a margin of zero pixels. If I save that, so control S and go back to the browser, then you can see that if I F5, that the white border is not showing up anymore. I'm going to close these down. I'm also going to close this one. We can also do that for the canvas. Um, we could also use canvas here and now say background color red. And then we can delete this. And go back to a browser and press F5. And as you can see, it's still red. Now, the next thing I want to do is make this canvas go across the whole screen. So to do that, we're going to actually define some JavaScript. So what do we have to do? I'm going to load this canvas and I'm going to open up a script tag. Inside the script tag, we are able to create JavaScript. And the first thing that I want to do is get a reference inside our JavaScript of this canvas element. So how do we do that? I'm going to create a var, and that's actually not right anymore. We're going to create a const, which is a variable which is constant. So we can set it only once, and it's not going to be set anymore after that. So we create a const canvas, and we call the document get by ID. So how does this work? Well, on the canvas element, we can set an ID and I'm going just to just put a canvas inside it. And we can now type in here, canvas. And what will happen is this document with get element by ID will create a reference of the element which is can find by the ID canvas. Well, in this case, that's our canvas. So it will create that reference and put it inside our canvas variable. 
if we console that now, we can see what is happening. So a console log creates a console log inside the logging of our web browser. So if we control S that and press F5, press F12 to open up our browser, F tools again and now go to the console, you can see that our canvas is now inside our console. If you hover over it, you can also see that it shows that this is the element that we are hovering over. So what we can do now with this canvas is we can set the height and the width to the properties of our screen. So how do we do that? I'm going to create additional two constants and one for the width, or we can call it screen width. And we're going to set it with the window, which keeps property of the window that we're in. And I'm going to call the inner width is going to give us back the amount of pixels on the screen in the width. So this is probably if you have a 19, 1920 screen by 1080, then it will be around 1920 with a little margin. So also we're going to do that for the height. And now we can set this canvas with these variables. So canvas dot width is screen width. Canvas dot height is screen height. Let's control S that, press F5. And as you can see now, our canvas is the whole screen. So how do we know it's not any bigger? Then we would see some scroll bars and they don't appear. So we know now that the canvas is our whole screen. So let's turn it back to white. Now we confirm that. So this can go away and it's white again. So what are we going to do now? Well, for now, we're just going to draw a simple line for this video. In the next video, we're going to actually draw many lines. So the first thing that we have to do to be able to draw a line is get the 2D context. So we're going to create another variable, const context, and then we go to the canvas and call get context, and we type as a string 2D. As you can see, it's also helping us a little. So context 2D is also something, and maybe it's even the default as I see now, but for sh to be sure, let's just do this. And what we can do now is we can draw on it. So how do we do that? I'm going to show you more properly in the next video, but for now, we can call on the context, the begin path method, and then we can call the line to method. So let's say 500, 500, and then context.stroke. So what is this that I typed out? Well, we told the context that we are going to create a new path. Then we're going to say, hey, draw a line to 500 by 500. So this is actually creating the reference so that the context is know what it's about to draw. So it's not, it didn't draw it yet. And to, if we call the context.stroke, it will draw the actual line. So let's save that, press F5, and nothing is happening. So that's also possible. So what we maybe forgot is context.move to zero, zero, semicolon. So what is, did this move to do? It set the starting point for our drawing. And I thought that if I didn't set it, then the automatic point of begin was zero, zero. But we have to set it, so we did that. And now we are able to draw a line. As you can see, we have drawn our first line from zero, zero to 500. So that's pretty nice. Last thing I want to do is draw a line to the middle of our screen, which is fairly simple, but I'm going to create another variable for that because we're going to do that many times. I also want actually our animations to start from the center. 
and not from the left top of our screen. So it's nice to have that reference as a constant. So what we can do is I'm going to define a const middle. And I'm actually going to create a little object which is going to hold the x and the y variable of our middle dot. So how do we do that? You open up curly braces, semicolon bind it. So now we can type in a JSON format the variables that we want and it will be clustered inside this middle variable. So I want the x coordinate and to do that I just type x double dot. And then to define the middle of the width of a screen, you just have to take the screen width and separate it by two. Then we have a comma instead of a semicolon. And we do that also for the screen height. Separate by two. And you don't need any commas anymore. And we control S that. And we don't go to our browser yet. Instead, this line two, this first input is the x coordinate and the, and the next input is the y coordinate. So to draw a line to the middle of our screen, we have our move to zero, zero. So, so to fill in the right x coordinate, we type here middle.x and middle.i and now it references this x coordinate and this y coordinate. If I now control S, go back to our screen, press F5, then it had drawn a line to exactly the middle of our screen. So that's kind of nice. That's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we will actually take a look at strokes a little bit more in depth.